Hello student, this is Chef Rahul Bhalekar from ASSM SCHMCT Pune. I am an assistant professor in food production department. Today we will discuss soups in this video, which will cover the aims and principles of soup making, classification of soups with examples, classical accompaniments and garnishes. Consume with pen garnishes. Now let's see what is soup. Soup is a liquid food that contains meat, seafood, vegetables, cereals, or poultry with flavorings and seasonings. Soups are naturally appetizing in nature. That is why they play an important role on the menu as they stimulate the appetite for the heavier foods to follow. If you are not serving appetizer as a first pour on your menu, you can always serve soups as the first pour since they are appetizing. Soups are popular due to increased nutritional consciousness amongst people. People want something which can be prepared, which could be lighter in nature for digestion. Soups gives an appetizing and satisfying experience as food. That is why, whatever is the reason, they emphasize the importance of soup making skills. Let's look into the classification of soups. Soup is divided into four major categories. That is thick soup, thin soups, national soups, and cold soups. Those soups are again divided into past and unpassed. Same for the thin soup as well. It has been again categorized as past and unpassed. With cold soups, we have jelly and non jelly category. Now, the thick past soups are again categorized as puree, cream. Velute, Holi, and Paste. The thick and past soup is chowder. Let's see the thin soups past category, which is consomme. And into the unpassed category, we have broth and bouillon. Again, we will have one more category to the classification of the traditional classification of the soup which is convenient soups convenient soups can also be a part of this classification with recent times as this is now readily available in the market and the usage is in the considerable amount with the knowledge available and the information available it could be said that when the soup was invented in its earliest days it would have been consumed as a complete meal because it is hearty, that is feeling, nourishing, economical and wholesome as well. Let's discuss the thick soups. Now the thick soups having two categories as past and unpassed, which are thickened by different thickening agents. The varieties of past thick soups are as follows. Bisque, shrimp bisque, Puree, puree greasy, coolie, strawberry coolie, velute, chicken velute, and the cream of tomato as the thick past cream soup. The thick unpassed soup that is chowder, the example is cabbage chowder. The next category under the thick past soup is puree. Now the puree is the <coughs> starchy vegetables like potatoes and legumes or cereals when pureed as a soup they have the self thickening quality that is why they do not need any thickening agent many vegetables like carrot pumpkins peas and green leafy vegetables need thickening agent as they do not have the quality of self thickening that means they do not cohere 
at themselves, at their own. These soups are served with protons. Some examples are Compian, which is puree of haricot beans, Sond, puree of red kidney beans with red wine, Grey, puree of green peas, Lambai, that is half of fresh peas puree and half the pipe of puree. Cream soups. Cream soups are composed with puree of vegetables, fish, poultry, or meat, which are blended with bechamel sauce and finished with cream. Sometimes the kitchen cream, the cooking cream itself is used as a thickening agent. Cream soups are diluted with milk, which retains their consistency and taste as well as appearance. Now, looking at the common examples of cream soups, cream of tomato, cream of argentuil, which is asparagus, cream of mushroom, cream of chicken, cream of spinach. Velute. Now, velutes are prepared with the blonde roux and adding the white stocks to it with vegetable puree or meat puree and hot milk is blended in to produce a smooth soup. The general proportions for velute soup are half basic velute which is blonde roux and either of the white stock, chicken or fish plus quarter amount of puree of main ingredient characterizing the soup plus quarter amount of stock or white consomme, which is used to dilute the mixture of puree. Velute is finished by using lysol as a thickening agent, which is the mixture of cream and egg yolk, which enhances the taste and texture of the velute. Now, examples of velute soups, chicken velute, almond velute, celery velute. Coolies. These are the uh, soaps of shellfish puree, thick shellfish puree. The example is shrimp coolie. Nowadays, the term is also used for liquid puree of fruits and vegetables. When the uh, liquid puree of fruit is used, the example is strawberry coolie, and the red pepper coolie is a great example of. Vegetable coolie. Bisque. These are the shellfish purees thickened with rice or cream. These are slightly thick rice cream type of soup with small pieces of cooked shellfish in it to give a feeling of meat. This also adds the flavor to the soup. The good quality of wine can also be added to contribute towards the flavor and color. The examples of this are crayfish bisque, shrimp bisque, and lobster bisque. Now, coming to the thick and fast soup, which is chowder. This is originated in America and which is thick and heavy. The chowders normally consist of potatoes, onions, seafood and seasonings. Bacon is also added to provide the flavor and the appearance. You can always avoid the bacon if you do not like it or you don't prefer it or if you have some religious restrictions. Chowders can be milk or tomato based. The crackers are normally served with the chowders which are added just before the service. The examples of chowders are clam chowder, seafood chowder, oyster chowder. Now let's discuss the second main category of soup 
thin soups, which are again categorized as parched and unforced. Most of the time, the fast soups, fast thin soups, are consumers or some nutritious liquids. So they have the characteristics like they are clear, they are strongly flavored, they do not have any starch, they have a garnish, or they have some small dainty cut food items floating in it as a part of it. Now let's see. What is consuming? The word consuming comes from the French word consumer, which means to bring to completion or perfection with the possible highest level. It consumes are strongly flavored with the best joints or best part of meat and poultry with the proper seasoning. These are clarified and flavorful. Consumes, rather the variety of consumes gets their name from the additional ingredients that are added to the consomme as a garnish or as a part of it. Now let's watch a video on con making a consomme, rather how to open a consomme in a professional kitchen. So let's watch a video. Jay Gibbard here from StellaCulinary.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a consomme, which is a classic technique used to clarify stocks and broths. So here I have an extra cloudy chicken stock, but you can use pork, you can use veal, whatever you like. Uh, so your standard mirepoix, uh, carrots, celery, onions, and also the bottom portion of a leek, just the light green and white portion only. Fresh herbs, here I'm using chervil and tarragon, but you can use whatever you like. Some eggs and boneless skinless chicken meat. Now we're only going to be using the egg whites. So you want to separate out the yolks. You can set this aside and uh, save them for a custard or whatever else you want to use your egg yolks for. And once you have all your egg whites separated, go ahead and just uh, whisk them by hand vigorously for about 30 seconds just to aerate the egg whites. This is going to allow incorporating the other ingredients for your clarification wrap a little bit easier. Now here I just opted to uh, julienne up my vegetables. You can also pass them through a grinder or you can put them in a food processor. I like to kind of julienne my vegetables just because honestly that's how I've always done it. But grinding or finely mincing will also work. Now here I have uh, the boneless skin, this chicken meat. That I'm going to uh, chop up into small bits first and then I'm going to place it into a food processor. If you have a uh, meat grinder that's even better because the whole idea behind this is you want to get the meat particles as small as possible so when you incorporate them into your raft they float. Now here I'm using chicken meat because I'm making a chicken consomme but if I was making a veal consomme I'd use veal. If I was making a pork consomme I'd use pork. You get the idea. Now I'm going to uh, re-whisk the egg whites just briefly to bring back the airiness and then add in the meat, the herbs, and my julienne vegetables and just hand mix thoroughly until I form bit of a paste where all the ingredients are evenly mixed together. Place this into the bottom of a pot and then cover with your cold cloudy stock that you want to clarify and here yes I could have easily used a larger pot but that'll still work. I'm going to place the pot over a high flame and you want to stir this constantly as it heats up. Now at this point too you can add in any spices that you want and this is just to flavor uh, your consomme. Really, your egg whites and your protein in the meat are doing the heavy lifting of the clarification. Uh, the mirepoix and all that other stuff is just there to add additional flavor. Now, you want to keep on stirring your consomme until it heats up to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit, at which point the raft will start to slowly form and it's going to float to the top. Now, when that raft starts to form, you want to then take your thermometer and kind of uh, push away just the center area. This is going to be where your uh, stock percolates up while it's clarifying. I'm going to press my ladle directly down and make a nice hole. Here I'm using about a two ounce ladle. Uh, so I'm just going to make a small hole right in the center. And this is where I'm going to pull all of my stock from during the uh, simmering process and baste the wrap. So you want to very, see how gently this is simmering? You want to very gently simmer your stock for about 45 to 60 minutes, basting every five minutes at least. I'm just kind of pulling the consomme from the center and see how I'm pouring it over the raft. This is keeping the raft from drying out, but it's also helping to filter uh, my stock through those egg whites and through my raft. 
which as you can see here over time, as I continue to do this, my consomme becomes more and more clear. Now after the 45 to 60 minute mark, or really when your consomme looks nice and clear, you're going to strain it through a chinois, uh, fine with a cheesecloth, and see how I'm gently pressing the raft down with a ladle. You're just going to uh, press that raft down, kind of collect uh, the clarified stock, which is now a consomme, and give it a strain. Now as you can see here, look at how beautiful and clear our consomme is that we have uh, made over the last 60 minutes. A real contrast, I mean, if we put it side by side with our original stock, you can really see uh, the contrast of what we started with and what we have here. Now, why do you actually make a consomme? Well, because it looks cool, it looks beautiful, and it's one of those classic techniques that chefs and diners love. For more information, including recipes and ratios for this consomme, and also some supporting video techniques like how to make stock, uh, some nice skills that we covered in this video, head on over to StellaCloning.com. If you click that big old fat link that says click here in the center of your video screen right now, it'll take you directly to our consomme page, which will have all the information that you need. Hope you have watched the video carefully and enjoyed it. To obtain a consomme, we need to have the better understanding of the ingredients and the cooking methods. Now let's see some classical consommes. Consomme royale, which is the diocese of Severe custard in consomme. Consomme julien is consomme with julien of vegetables. Consomme brunoise is consomme with small dices of vegetables, approximately 2 mm. Consomme celestine is with julienne of thin grapes. Consomme vermicelli is with fine noodles. Consomme breton is with julienne of celery, onions, and leeks. Consomme dubari is with small florets of cauliflower. Consomme madrilin is with dices of large tomato with green peas. Consomme Saint German is with green peas. Consomme Pearson is with uniform size flat cuts of fresh vegetables. Consomme Florentine is with Julian of spinach. Now let's see the unpassed variety of king soup. The first one is broth. Broths are the little cloudy liquids and contains all types of vegetables, meat, chicken, etc. This should be cut into desired shape and should be floating in the soup. The point needs to be taken care of here is do not overcook or undercook the vegetable so as because you are supposed to keep them big raw so that they could be failed while having the broth. Now the broths usually have cheaper cuts of meat such as scrag end of mutton. The stag end of mutton means the neck of lamb in between the lamb head and the lamb shoulder. That's the cheaper cut. Some of the popular broths are scotch broth, petit marmite, soup bun form, soup passion, and potash parmier. Ready to serve broth. Bouillon, the another type of him in soup. Now, bouillon comes from the word boil. It is more strong, meaty flavor, clear soup with pieces of vegetables, meat, seafood, etc. floating in the soup. Bouillon and broths are the terms which are interchangeable and practically mean the same. They are unpassed soups with a slight difference in color of the liquid that is with the broth. The broths are slightly cloudy due to the addition of starch to it. Now that is the only practical difference between bouillon and broths. Elsewise the process and the uh, ingredients are almost the same. Thickening agents used in soups. The Various thickening agents which are used to thicken the soups are bechamel sauce, 
starch, which is rice, and rice plus slurry, corn plus slurry, and potatoes. You can use potato powder as well. Lysol, that is mixture of egg yolk and cream, mostly used in thickening the vegetable based soup. Cooking cream, which is widely used as it is readily available in all the kitchens. So as egg yolk. Also, velute sauce, which is used as a thickening agent. Let's see the common garnishes or standard accompaniments for soups. Croutons. Toasted or fried bread cubes are called croutons. Cream. The cream is used by swirling on top of the soup or placing a dollop of beaten cream on top of the soup. Fresh herbs. Sprigs of fresh parsley or other herbs are used. Cuts of vegetable. The key vegetable ingredient or the main ingredient in vegetable soup is cut into fancy shape and used as a garnish of that particular soup. Cold soups. In the cold soups, we have jellied and non jellied type. The jellied variety is prepared by reducing the meat stock, and the natural gelatin is used. If not, then addition of gelatin powder or starch or puree makes the soup thick. The non jellied soups are basically uh, vegetable soups which doesn't have the characteristics of self-thickening. Cold consume madrillion and vishishua, which is a rich cream of potato, are the popular cold soups in the world. Bosch, which can be served cold or hot, and andalis gashpacho are also famous cold soups. Andalis gashpacho is a tomato cucumber soup garnished with thin strips of pimentos flavored with cumin seeds and accompanied with croutons. Now the chefs never miss on the cold soups because they are so popular that they cannot afford by not mentioning them or by not incorporating them in their summer menus. international soups now these are the soups which are originated from a certain locality and are associated with it these soups have a great tradition with the impact of religion local produce and cooking methods and sometimes pots example new england clam chowder from usa which helped the early colonists to survive many winters when they entered the land with having aboriginal culture and food. Now we'll see few of the international soups with the origin of rather country of origin. Minestrone from Italy, green turtle soup from England, French onion soup from France, scotch broth and cockaliki from Scotland, Muligatwani soup from India, Gaspacho from Spain, and so on. Let's look at the points to remember while making the soup. Always use good quality flavorful stock. Remember, quality produces quality. If you have a heavy entree, keep your soup thin or light. If you have a heavy soup, serve it in a small portion. The soup should be filling or consist of food that require much chewing. Okay? The soup should not be filling or consist of food that require too much chewing. That has to be kept remembering, that has to be kept in your mind because if you serve the Feeling soup, 
there is no point in serving the entrees or the further course of the menu it will go waste garnish should be small and dainty which should be easily picked up by the soup spoon and the soup has to be seasoned moderately serve hot soups piping hot and cold soups cold sugar is added to tone the acidity of the soup before mixing the cream as it prevents curdling of the cream consommes should be clear and amber in color accompaniments of soup should be crisp example melba toast variety of crackers bread sticks cheese croutons bread rolls etc now when we serve the soup we need to keep two things in our mind is the portion size of the soup and the temperature of the soup now when we are serving the soup as an appetizer the standard portion size is 6 to 8 ounces and when we are serving the soup as a main course the serving portion is 10 to 12 ounce per portion temperatures for hot soups is between 88 to 93 degrees centigrade and the cold soups which should be served below 4 degrees centigrade always with this we come to the end of this session on soup students i would like to thank you for being patient for this session please attempt the quiz which is given in the description box the link is provided in the description box especially the students of all india shri shivaji memorial society's college of hotel management and catering technology should attempt the quiz thanking you again have a good day ahead keep watching and keep learning goodbye